If you were God, wouldn't you want people worshiping you of your own of their own free will? That's what God wanted. He wanted companionship. Now, in the Bible, it states clearly that God is perfect. He is sinless. He is gracious. That means he must judge sin. If he doesn't judge sin, then he's allowing sin and therefore he is not being perfect. So he must judge sin. So I know, and you think about yourself, the sin that you have committed in your life is part of your history. You cannot go back in time and undo your sin. I wish I could, but I can't. I have done crimes. I'm in legal trouble now. I can't climb out of it. I have done it. We've all done it. And we all continue to do it until we die. But we are born in sin. We are sinful. Um, so what's important to realize is that that sin that we have, we can't get rid of. We can't go back in time and get rid of it and redo it. It will always be with us. In order for us to get into heaven, we have to be sinless because God being perfect has to judge our sin. And the Bible, Christian Bible says that the consequences of sin is death and death is eternity from being separated from God and that is hell. And for us, that is going to be an excruciating torment. Do you want to take that chance? You need to choose a religion. I chose Christianity for these reasons when I studied the other major world religions. Now, how does science compare to the Bible? It is important to realize that the Bible is a theological history book. It is not a science text. It does not state in the Old Testament the production of cars, TVs, and computers in the future. It does not talk about neutron stars and magnetars and, and quasars and other universes in the Bible. It does not discuss photosynthesis and plants. It talks about the days, the six days that God created creation. But is there a discontinuity, is there a discontinuity between creationism and the six days, the seventh day rest, and science? Well, no. You must realize that there's a verse in the Bible that states that. The verse in the Bible states this. God says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, my ways are higher than your ways. And that is true. And we must realize that his creation is always going to be higher than our science can describe. And I'll give you some examples. In the Evolution of Species by Charles Darwin, there are scientific, there's nothing wrong with it. It makes sense, but there are problems. For example, science also states that the grand major result of mutations is death or dysfunction or nothing not advancement such as bacteria being able to grow on an antibiotic science can describe genes as being switched on that allow and bacteria, for example, that can grow on, on an antibiotic such as erythromycin, as being switched on and being able to grow on erythromycin. Those genes already exist, and science has always already determined through molecular biology in the 1990s, and I mostly was a molecular biology student, that more than 90% of the human DNA doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Well, why is it there? What's its function if it doesn't make sense? Then therefore, isn't there DNA in bacteria also that seems extraneous? And wouldn't some of that DNA be genes that could be turned on and allow the production of, of bacteria to grow on in unfavorable environments and seem to be advanced? Or would mutations, which scientifically are shown to usually be detrimental or non-profitable by any means be the major solution. Which is the major solution? So there's nothing wrong with Darwin's evolution of species, molecular biology, and the 
history book, the Bible. You also must realize timelines. How old is the earth? I believe in radiometric dating, but there is a problem, and I never could understand this in science. It really is not determined exactly how much radioisotopes such as uranium, uh, plutonium, thorium, cesium have existed from the beginning of the creation of the earth to be able to date the earth accurately. So, this means that dates are off hundreds of millions of years. So, there are scientific inaccuracies and tomorrow, or in the future, we will say, couldn't you believe it's amazing to think that back in the so-and-so, the 200, the, two, the 2002, 2200, 2020, we believed this about science and now we've determined it's wrong. Science is always changing. What about biogenesis? Charles Darwin was concerned about biogenesis. How does life form? And he had no answer. Well, Miller did an experiment of making a spark in an atmosphere of nitrogen and carbon dioxide in a sealed glass container with, uh, with uh, hydrocarbons and water in a fluid mix under uh, 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 atmospheric pressure and he saw the creation of amino acids but it didn't form life. Well, another scientist lysed cells so you really did have all of the molecules of, of life and they did not, under the same biogenic conditions, form life again. So science has never been able to form life in a test tube. This points to the evidence that only a creator can create life. Science also states, I'm thinking thermodynamics, but actually that's not it. Um, I can't think of it right now, uh, but nothing, something must come from something. Nothing doesn't come from something. We are surrounded by stuff, material objects. We are surrounded by energy and matter. Where did it come from? It had to come from somewhere. Science does state as a hypothesis, as a, as a um, hypothesis, excuse me, not a hypothesis, it states as a, um, uh, a, um, uh, a principle that matter and energy have to have came from matter and energy from something. Nothing doesn't come from something, or something doesn't come from nothing. It doesn't work that way. Well, where did matter come from? Now, I used to abuse hallucinogenic drugs. I never had a vision like Joseph Smith with Mormonism did, or stated he did, with my hallucinations. My hallucinations were simply the replacement of neurotransmitter chemicals in the brain to cause them to act in the synaptic cleft junctions in a specific dysfunctional way as to create auditory and visual hallucinations, and hallucinations of touch, taste, and smell. And we see these processes occurring, such as with LSD and serotonin, which is still being scientifically researched in California to this day. <clears throat> Other major uh, advancements in pharmaceuticals, such as the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and the selective serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, have eliminated people's uh, schizophrenia. So we see these advancements in the elimination of schizophrenia in modern medication these advances must continue. That's just a side note. But I want to get to the fact that I had no visions. What does the Bible say about people who have visions? Joseph Smith founded Mormonism. Mormonism is known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They have specific beliefs based on Joseph Smith, such as polygamy. But the Bible himself, now Joseph Smith said he believes all the words of the Bible, but the Bible clearly states that in Genesis, God saw that man was alone and it was not good. So he created a partner from him, for him, named Eve. One partner, not a, a whole harem of girls, of women. One partner. 
And God later states in the Bible, let no man break apart what he unites together, a woman and a husband in marriage. A man and a woman are united together. Biologically, this makes sense because there's pretty much an equal number of men and women who are birthed. It's not like there's and the birth rate is a few men and a whole bunch of women, where you would see polygamy as scientifically making sense. Now, wouldn't God show in a science, you know, scientifically that polygamy must be justified if it's scientifically extremely evident? No, it is not evident. It doesn't work that way. So we need to use our brains. Study the major religions and make a, ch a choice for yourself. I chose Christianity because I saw the major flaws in the other religions. Now, continuing. Um, Joseph Smith saw a vision where he was praying about which of the denominations of Christian churches he should attend. And God and Jesus said to him in a vision, None of them, you must form your own, for all have gone astray. And he formed his own church, more, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, based on principles such as polygamy. He rewrote the Bible. He wrote the Book of Mormon. He changed major concepts of the Bible. But the Bi he says he believes in the Bible. He said he believed in. He's dead now. He said he believed in the entirety of the Bible. But you will read in the ending of the Book of Revelation in the Bible, where John specifically states, "Let no man add." to this book, and he was referring to the Bible. That vision would have to be added to the book, the Bible, because it was a vision. Therefore, the vision is wrong. It is a deception. But the Bible does say deceptions come from Satan and the demons. Deceptions also come from our own heart, for we are fallen human beings. We can't blame everything on the demons and Satan. We can't just say, Satan made me do it. It's our choice. We're the final ones to make the decision to sin. God says in his Bible, he always gives us a chance to back out of his sin. I fail to do that a lot. So make a decision for yourself. Overall, I want you to take away this point. God, in order to be perfect, God is perfect. We can't have sin in our life.